HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we take a look at highlights of the Hillers football annual Thanksgiving battle with Ashland. Four were honored at the Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill ceremony. And Matt Clark will fill you in on HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, the planning board received an update regarding the downtown corridor project. At this past Monday's meeting, the planning board received an update on the downtown corridor project. So conducted um, safety analysis of uh, the of key intersections along uh, the corridor. You know, there's about 17,000 vehicles a day that are on Main Street. Um, bicycle accommodation uh, within the corridor, there are a couple different options. On road, we, you know, in the lane, separated bike lanes, and then a two-way separated bike lane. I'm going to go over those in, in one minute. Pedestrian amenities, ADA ramps are, uh, you know, a little bit um, are, are not prevalent right now along Main Street. And then with new sidewalks going through there, we'll have new, all new ADA ramps throughout the project limits and all the side streets and uh, you know, through driveways that are, as necessary. Um, parking, you know, we're working with the town and the Chamber of Commerce on parking. We know there's been some impact. We're looking to, you know, mitigate and, uh, and get new off-street parking that will mitigate some of the stuff on, you know, directly on Main Street. And then the major intersections, obviously, Wood Street, Cedar and Grove, and Marathon Way, or Hayden Road and Marathon Way, and Ash Street are the, you know, kind of the major traffic contributors um, in areas that needed to have upgrades for safety. One of the big topics of discussion was the placement of the bike lanes. The single separated bike lanes run from Cedar to Hayden Row, so that's bike lanes on each side and following the traffic direction. And then the, the separated two-way bike lane is really from Wood Street to Cedar Street. That's where there's bike lanes on one side going in both directions. The whole length. From, from Cedar to Wood Street. Yep, okay. On both sides? One side. No, one one, side. From, Cedar to, from Wood to Cedar, there's two lane, two bikes on one side, separated from traffic. Right. And then from Cedar to Hayden Row, it's one bike lane on each side following the direction of traffic. Is there a cross area for that? At the, inter at the intersection. Okay. Can I ask? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over that in a moment. Yep. Okay, so from Cedar to Wood Street, where it's a two-way two bike lane, are, is there no, are there no parked cars on that side? Or? Correct. The, uh, so correct. Parking, the car, parking for cars is all the other side, and the bike lane is on one side, okay. Yes. <coughs> um, as, as part of improving our traffic operations, first I just wanted to go over, this is the Wood Street intersection. Signalized now, uh, there's only really a one lane approach as, you know, so any vehicle that wants to make a left turn into Wood Street kind of queues up the traffic on Main Street that wants to go through. So we've done a little bit of widening on the corner. We've teed up Wood Street as best we can. And then the stop bar, has been moved a little bit further back because any vehicles making this right turn, you know, the, the stop bar, if someone was in the stop bar closer to the intersection, there's going to be a conflict. So we've moved that back. We've tried to tee this up a little bit. We've taken a little out of this nose and then moved the stop bar back so we can improve operations here. With this two lane here, or like a left turn lane and a through lane, when someone is in this left turn lane, to make the turn into Wood Street, it's not going to impede the through movement on Main Street, which is a major congestion point existing now. So how many cars can queue up to turn left without blocking? Uh, that's going to be about five or six cars going to be able to queue up there. Okay. That's good. And in the, um, would be the uh, southwest direction, we've, uh, you have a, a right turn lane to go onto Wood Street, 
and a through lane, and we have a bike lane in between those two lanes. New industry standard is, you know, the bikes are supposed to be in either in the travel lane or, or adjacent to the, the traveling lane. So we can't really have them separated at the curb line, although, it, you know, predominant, you know, I guess uh, rule of thumb has been, you know, you, with bikes generally it's been stay far right. Um, but when you introduce a right turn lane like that, you create a conflict with the bike in that right turn lane. Because we want to run this with a right turn arrow, an overlap, because there's a significant right turn movement there. And if you have bikes that want to be going straight, now you've created a conflict in this area. So industry standard has changed such that the bike lane is adjacent to the through movement of traffic if it's going obviously through following the course of traffic. So as you're, as you're approaching um, the, the intersection. Uh, intersection, we have we have a separated bike lane on this side, yeah. comes up to the intersection and it crosses over and any bikes that are in this, this stretch would be in the lane in between the right turn lane and the through lane on Main Street. That's the way it's laid out. The Hopkinton Hiller football team had a historic run this season. Quarterback Ryan Kelleher snapped the school record for passing yards, while wide receiver Will Abbott broke the single season reception and touchdown record. The Hillers also picked up win number 500 in school history. The Hillers were disappointed in the semifinals of the playoffs with a tough loss to a very good Melrose team but ended the season on a high note in their annual Thanksgiving battle with Ashland. Here's a look. Welcome to Bayview Stadium for this morning's annual Thanksgiving football game. As the visiting Ashland Clockers take on the Tri-Valley League and Division IV South sectional champion, Hopkinton Hillers. First, we'd like to say a special thank you to the boys and girls cross country teams of both Ashland and Hopkinton for running the game football from Ashland High School here to Chick Welch Field. Let's give a round of applause to both teams. And now we'd like to start our morning by acknowledging our senior cheerleaders and the football players as they cheer and play on their home football field for the last time. We ask that each athlete and your parents come forward when your name is read. Starting with Will Abbott with parents Ray Tanya and Sister Madison. Next, Shane Cooney with Chris, Aaron, and sisters Kara and Kelly. Next, Captain Anthony Farina with John and Sandy and brothers Johnny and Jack. Next, Zach Fisher with John and Barb, brother Joshua and sister Alyssa. Next, Captain Connor Hebert with parents Mark and Margaret, sisters Lucy and Abby. Next, Captain Michael Ionelli with parents David and Kelly, sisters Hannah and Jessica and brother Jack. Next, Kyle Cousins with parents Ken and Courtney and brother Kevin. Next, Matt LaFlash with parents Jim and Kathy. Next, Captain Matt Lindquist with parents Bob and Peg and brother Eric. How are you doing, boys? Good, how are you doing? Everybody well? 
Finally, Captain Alex McDonald with parents Bruce and Bridget and brother Bennett. And now for the seniors of Hopkinton's cheer squad, starting with Captain Lisa Breton with parents Mom, Nancy, and brother Patrick. Next, Audrey Gladu with Sue and Paul Pettivillano and Eric Gladu and sister Olivia. <laughs> and, you. and last but certainly not least, Captain Riley Myers with parents Kevin and Molly. For the 94th time, the Hopkinton Hillers met up with the Ashland Clockers for Thanksgiving Day football. A new tradition started this year as members of the Ashland and Hopkinton cross country team ran all the way from Ashland High School to David M. Hughes Stadium to deliver the game ball. The first points of the game came in the second quarter. A pitch to Will Abbott and he finds the end zone from a few yards out. The extra point makes it seven to nothing Hillers. Two minutes, 40 seconds left in the first half. A high snap on the Ashland punt and Connor Hebert makes the tackle for the safety and the Hillers take the nine to nothing lead into the halftime locker room. At the half, play-by-play -play man Rick DeSina interviewed a living legend, Aubrey Doyle Sr., about the longtime Hopkinton Ashland rivalry. Hello, Hiller fans. We're here today, Thanksgiving morning, and we're gonna have a little conversation with Aubrey Doyle Sr who I consider the, the town resident on all sports here. He's been athletic director, teacher, coach, he's done it all. Rumor has it you were at the first game 94 years ago, is that true? Not quite. <laughs> so what have you seen over the years change um, that uh, since you maybe were playing, since you were coaching to today, what's changed the most in the game? Face masks and so forth on the helmets. We we played without any of that stuff. You had the leather helmet back in the day? Oh yeah. Was it, uh, how was the weather back in the day playing in Thanksgiving Day? Well, 47 was just like today. The field was icy to begin with and then mud. But the second half was all mud. So where did you play back in the, in the 40s and 50s until they got to this field? The middle school is now. By the Doyle Gym? Yeah, beyond that. Right up here, right behind this field right here. I played in that in the, in the 80s, in the 70s, I played in that field up here. So it's been, that field was around for a long time. Well, the field you played on was below one of the old ones. Oh, okay. The old one was where the school is built now. So what about this year's team? They went as, uh, if they win today, it'll be 11 wins. Only the second team, the second team to do that in history. What do you think of that? Yeah, a good team, real good team. They did a nice job. They had a tough game last Saturday, but they did very well before, before that, and they're doing very well today. Yeah, they have a, a lot of team speed. They didn't, haven't necessarily had that in the last few years, but uh, the the Abbott and Kelleher connection been one of the uh, best in, in the history. Yeah, it is. Like the doyle Ostrander connection. So, one last thing, I'm gonna let you go. I know it's a little chilly out here and the band's going, but what do you um, what do you like most about the Thanksgiving Day game? Just the idea that we play Ashland, and tradition we've been there for since 1923, played every year except one. Now what year, why, why didn't we play that year? 1940, there was a big snowstorm and they couldn't clear the field. Did they end up playing the game no. later? They just never played it? Never played it. But that was the only one they didn't play. Well, that's an interesting fact. Who would have known that? If we, if we didn't have Aubrey Doyle out here today, we would have known that, most of us anyway. Well, Coach, it was good to see you. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Say hello to all the boys and the girls for me. Thank you. Thank you. 
Third quarter, 6.57 left. The Hillers turn it over at the three and Ashland takes advantage of the situation. Lofting pass. Oh, oh, number 13. Down the sideline. He's gone. He's gonna make it all the way. Abbott's got a, an angle. He's at the 10 and he's not able to get him. That's all the way down for a 97-yard touchdown by number 13, Nathan Sickles. 97 yards on the touchdown rece reception. Later in the quarter, Ashland punting and uh-oh, another high snap leads to another safety. And the Hillers go up by four, and that is how the score would stay. The Hillers end their historic 2017 season with a record of 11 and one, and take the victory by a final of 11 to seven. Congratulations on a great season to coach Jim Girard and the Hopkinton Hillers. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll take you to the annual Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill ceremony. And Matt Clark has your HCAM Insider. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. <laughs> This week on HCAM, Stephanie Harris of the Humane Society of the United States talks to the visitors at the HCA about activism and how you can get involved. Um, we have here in Massachusetts joint committees, so that means there are senators and representatives that serve on the committee. So there's a House chair and a Senate chair of each of these joint committees. And they have committee hearings, um, and they have a certain amount of time to hold those committee hearings. Welcome back to HCAM News. Each year, a program started by Assistant Principal Josh Hanna recognizes some outstanding Hopkinton High School alumni that have great achievements in their professional life or within their community. This year, four alumni were honored and entered into the Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill Hall. On Tuesday, November 21st, Michael Whalen, Scotty e. Mackin, Sarah Ellum, and Josh Hanna were inducted into the Hopkinton High School Hall of Fame here is a look at this year's annual Top of the Hill induction ceremony. The kids have in town for Scott is just remarkable. And it's been that same way ever since that very first day 17 years ago. Um, I was making up a list with his mother um, before, we, uh, before we met up tonight, just of all the things he's involved in even outside of the school in the community for Hopkinton, uh, running the Parks and Rec summer camp, working with the fire department, the police department, um, volunteering, dressing up as Santa Claus, uh, refing Special Olympic basketball games, and always teeing up at least one or two players. Uh, working at the Boston Marathon, the Memorial Day and Veterans Day events that he does with, with uh, Mike Whalen, uh, the Turkey Bowl, Live for Evan race, my uh, Timlin race, uh, Michael's run, it just goes on and on and on. Wally's bodyguard at the, uh, the Little League parades. Um, if there's an event going on in town, uh, you're most likely, likely going to see him there. Hey, Scott, did you have a good time tonight? Yep. How does it feel to be honored? You happy? Happy. Congratulations, buddy. You deserve it. And I hear my, I hear my, uh, my team battling. I said, I said, I'm, 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 I'm being there. I hear my, my. I will always remember this ceremony as earning the respect of the people in your life is a true member measure of achievement. I want to thank all who have touched my life, including my family, especially my daughters, Susie and Sarah, who validate and give purpose to my life. And I'll make a prediction right now that someday my daughters will be standing right here where I am accepting the same award. One more thing, the name Hiller will always be politically correct. As many of you are aware, people outside of Hopkinton ask, what is a Hiller anyway? Well, you can tell them that it's not a person or a thing. It's a state of mind. It's a spirit. It's Sarah and it's Scotty. It can't be seen 
yet it's everywhere. Carry Hill of Pride with you for the rest of your life, and thank you for your attention. First of all, I had a very nice day. Thank you. And uh, I um, feel overwhelmed, really. Uh, this, this honor is, as I mentioned in my speech, there's been thousands and thousands of graduates over the years, and to be singled out uh, is uh, very humbling, very humbling, and I really, really appreciate it. This soil, this community of Hopkinton, and particularly the teachers in my life, all of the teachers, created the conditions that allowed me to thrive, and now I hope I can do the same for the students of Hopkinton, to introduce them to the power of language, to help them strengthen their voices, and to realize that we have a responsibility to save each other. Fitzgerald's Gatsby believed in the green light, the orgastic future before him. Well, teachers have that depth, depth of aspiration as well, but we also have the opportunity to create wonder, foster hope, and help construct the framework necessary for young people to live their dreams, to create a life. Thank you once again for this tremendous honor. It has been a remarkable day and night. Thank you. Um, it feels wonderful. It was such an honor to hear these, the kind words that people spoke about me and to be included in the group with Mike and Scotty and Josh, which was a surprise and an honor he so deserved. So it's been a wonderful night. You certainly deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. Lastly, we have a surprise inductee tonight, Mr. Hanna. After graduating from Hopkinton High School in 1995, Mr. Josh Hanna attended Framingham State University majoring in secondary education, and he later received his master's degree in educational leadership from Simmons College. In August of 2000, Mr. Hanna was hired as a history teacher at Natick High School. During his 13 years of teaching at Natick High School, he also served as a baseball coach, a football assistant coach, club advisor, history department chair, and was the Golden Excellence in Education Award recipient for Educator of the Year in 2013. TVL and Boston Globe all-star. Josh also played varsity baseball for me. He was not the captain. <laughs> he was not very good. <laughs> Josh was even our school mascot, Hillerman. How incredible that that name, all these years later as you win this prestigious award, has stuck with you. That's him. Now it's hard to find. <laughs> so we looked in and, and saw all the things. I don't mean to invade your privacy, but it's public. The things you wrote in that yearbook. Your secret desires. Become the Syracuse Orange Man. Now I've written letters for hundreds of kids over the years to play baseball, to study history, to play football. I've never, Josh is still the only one I wrote to the school to the athletic director to be their mascot. <laughs> and you didn't get in. So. Sorry, Josh. To have a wonderful family. And you have succeeded that, in that endeavor. And your, your family is beautiful from top to bottom. And you're uh, a role model for your two wonderful children. All right, so I know you weren't expecting it, but uh, no. certainly well deserved. I don't feel to be honored tonight. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm kind of speechless about how it feels. I, I just love this school so much in this town that to be a part of it, uh, it, it it's, it's a great feeling. You know, it's a nice way to go into a holiday break for sure. And, uh, but the reality is there's been a lot of important people that have given me the confidence to, 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 to try to lead and, and be a part of this community in a positive way. And I'm just trying to give back to so many people that gave to me when I was young. And, and I feel like if we do that uh, in society, then we'll keep getting better, we'll keep improving. So. Yeah, it's, it's a tremendous honor. It totally caught me by surprise. Uh, Mr. Simos sharing those kind words was kind of a nice blast from the past. And, uh, you know, it's just a great place to be. So I'm happy to be able to turn on to work tomorrow morning, bright and early. Well, you certainly deserve it. You do a lot for the community. Congratulations. Thank you. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's promotions coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. 
On Friday, December 1st at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat about the recent happenings in town on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Monday, December 4th at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod talks with local poet Mary Lou Mansfield, who reads her heartfelt poetry on a new episode of Senior View. At 7 p.m., author, poet, and storyteller Jan Krause Green looks to explore the heart with her poetry on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. At 8.30 p.m., Kate O'Connor talks with physicians and experts about the dangers of carbon monoxide and other deadly winter hazards on a new episode of Physician Focus. And at 9.30 p.m., Elizabeth Lund talks with poet, blogger, and filmmaker Carla Schwartz on a new episode of Poetic Lines. On Tuesday, December 5th at 6.45 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, December 6th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversations on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to view pictures and videos from throughout our community and also to stay up to date with upcoming events. If you have a Hopkinton related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com.